All right, now we're doing 7Q Clear Passage. This is by a DFHWZE and a 90, excuse me, 79% of people like it. Uh, well, given a scrambled path, we're going to return the number of rotations needed in a horizontal direction to make a clear passage from top to bottom. There's always at least one configuration poss possible and uh, multiple solutions may be possible. Any valid solution passes this kata. All right, so the input, we're going to get rows, which is an array of strings, each representing a row that needs to be rotated in order to make a clear passage from top to bottom. So X is a wall, and uh, period is a tile of path. Uh, for the output, we want to return an array of integers specifying the amount of rotations required to make a clear passage when all rows have been rotated. Uh, zero will equal no rotations, a positive number will be rotations going to the left, and uh, negative are rotations going to the right, all right? Uh, specifications, all right. Uh, rotation to the left shifts all tiles to the left, adding the left most tile back to the right, all right. And then uh, a rotation to the right goes to the right, all right, cool. So here's an example, rows, ro here's the ro here's the rows. We're not gonna move anything. We're gonna rotate this one left one, so this will go over here. This won't move because it's we're making the line down this way. And then this one's going to go right one, which will be negative one. Uh, clear passage is formed when there's a continuous path, blah, 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 blah. All right, cool. So basically, oh, and then also we can get stuff like this too. So basically, this is just a lot of words for a little trick, right? All we really got to do is count up how many periods, how many times it takes to get a period over to this wall right here. So we could just use the index. So zero, one, two, that's how many it would take. One, two steps, two steps. Zero, one, it would take one step. And that's all we gotta do. So basically we can do a double for loop and uh, just count up to this one right here. So let's do that. Let's, uh, let's say let result, oops, because we're gonna have to, it's going to have to be like a result. All right, it doesn't say anything here, but the result needs to be like an array uh, saying how many for each one we had to move it. So, so we're going to let result equal an empty array. We're going to say four. And then we're going to go uh, let i equal zero while i is less than rows.length we're going to say i plus plus and then we're right here we're going to do a count so we can count how many times uh how many x's there are so we're going to say count let count equals zero and then we're going to do the other for loop we're going to say four let i equal zero excuse me not i what am i talking about let j equals zero while j is less than uh rows at i dot length we're going to say j plus plus all right and so we're going to do an if statement here we're going to say if uh what are we going to say here if rows at i at j equals an x we're going to say count plus plus and if not else we're going to say uh, break. We're just going to break on out of it and go to the next uh, go to the next i. All right, and let's go down here and do a console.log count. All right, test that. All right, one one one. Okay, so here's this count right here. Uh, let's do a right here. Let's do a result dot push count all right let's test that no we don't need to test that uh we can test it down here we can say console.log result and test this and now here's an array full of this stuff all right so that's how many that's the indexes that the uh, first period is at on each one of these so we can just say return result test that 
It works. And attempt it. And it works. But you know what? That's a lot of typing. And there's a slick little way to get all this in one line of code. So let's try that out. Let's do const to make this concise syntax. Rotate equals rows. Let's get rid of the parentheses. And then turn the rest of this into an arrow. All right? Even this. All right. Down here, we're going to say... Uh, we don't even need to do a console.log. We'll just say right here, uh, rows.map. And if you don't know about the map method, uh, the map method creates a new array populated with the results of calling a provided function on every element in the calling array. So like for this one, uh, every one of these X's is gonna be one of these uh, elements. So we're gonna do like X times two is gonna be one times two, which is two, four times two, which is eight, 9 times 2, which is 18, 16 times 2, which is 32, just like that. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to have, okay, let me bring this down here. Uh, we're going to use this arrow function syntax as well. We're going to have map, we're going to have the uh, element as our uh, argument, the arrow right here, and then the expression right here. So we're going to say map, and we're going to have element, element, all right. And then for this one, for each one of these elements that's going to go in there, so each one of these is going to be one of the elements, we're just going to check where the index of this thing is using the index of method, which returns the first index at which a given element can be found. All right? So we're just going to say element dot index of, and let's check the syntax. We're just going to say index of and search element right there. And we're going to say uh, that period right there. Now let's test that out. And there it is, just like that. And attempt it. All right, and submit it. And you can see that's pretty much this first one right here. Uh, this is doing something else, okay? Uh, this is doing basically what we did. This is a wild way to do it. Why not? You know, and then you can just keep going through and check them all out. Oh, there's hours, mine, hours right there. Uh, let's say mine right here. Best practice in my opinion. Very much like it. And we'll see you next time.